All right, how are you doing? So, let's try and do another um, bit of nostalgia, shall we? <clears throat> now then, I ain't done one for a while, so I'm gonna try and find my feet, but what I wanted to talk about was Gary today. And, um, and uh, you know, all the stuff we used to get up to when we was growing up. And uh, it all revolved around motorbikes, pretty much, I suppose, is the best way to describe him. And, uh, and our friendship and everyone else's we was all riding the motorbikes. Uh, I still like them. I ain't got one at the moment. Darren's got one. I ain't. John Finch, he's, still, he's got a couple. <laughs> and uh, Gary's dad. Yeah. Uh, old Paul Wolf's got one. I ain't got one anymore. I did have one. I was at ZZI number and someone nicked it out of my backyard. I'll never see it again. And because it weren't sworn sword. Because uh, that had just came out. Uh, he, uh, they, they had no record. They couldn't. I don't know. I had the logbook and I took it down in for the police station. And they kept going round and round in circles on the computer. So it, um, the bloke who nicked it re registered it and got away with it. That was nice, wasn't it? Well, you know, two and a half grand ZZL. Anyway. Never ever got over it. That's just wrong, isn't it? Anyway, nicking a man's motorbike. And it was to do with the people who were renting the shop, believe me, in the flat I was renting out. And they were from Tottenham. I really did get a bottom of it, but uh, the job I never really so I ain't had me there. Anyway. Yeah, so well, what we did was uh, we learned how to ride motorbikes like most urbans do in a field. And the field of choice at the start of all this was the uh, a field that by the jungle or the at the end of the power station alley that comes out in the rental block we used to go around there and pretty much got on, you know we was left alone we didn't really go near the houses uh, I was quite like just going up and down the power station alley just going through the gearbox and it, it was on a, a Yamaha FS1E fizzy the Yamaha 50cc fizzy purple tank he had and he used to let me have a go on it I, was, I can't believe it, you know what I mean? But I used to sit in the garage and I'd say help him, I used to find things for him in the, in the uh, toolbox. And then he'd find it quicker than me anyway, I didn't have a clue. I was still at school with him. And uh, but I loved all this, like taking things apart. And he explained to me how engines work, like, like rather than from a book. And I used to come home late a lot, covered in grease. I was learning all about this stuff, which is like a, a new chapter in my life. Coming out of a, I was due out of school with about, a, it was a year before I was due out of school, so we were around about 80, 81, we were talking about, so it's 40 years ago. And uh, I've got, you know, I always had a, a healthy obsession with motorbikes ever since I was a, a, a young lad, because of Barry Sheen, uh, Joey Dunlop, uh, and all the bikes that used to just fly through Enfield all the time, there were bikers everywhere. I just loved them. And my dad had a moped. <laughs> and I had to do, I was pretend it was a Triumph Bonneville or something like that. I'm talking Triumph Bonneville, was just at the top of the road, going Joe XL and Sons, and they used to sell Triumphs and Northerns and Pooch Maxis, and that's what my dad really lived for. <laughs> Bless him. It's his birthday today, 84 years. I was just throwing him up. Yeah. So uh, I mean, he, he could ride a bike, but he stayed away from the big ones. He did have, he did have something, a Pooch 250 with a sidecar when he was um, like first married to my mother. They got all the photos in the photo album, and then and then they had a Lambretta because he liked that side of things, you know, the lamp, the, the mods scene. He was. They were um, a bit smarter, weren't they, with the suits and that. He had the short back side, so he's more into that thing. I don't think you would uh, appreciate Pete Townsend smashing his 
Gibson guitar uh, Who concert. I don't think he would have uh, found it, yeah. Like to his taste, but there you go. I would have. Well, I have, I've seen it. Anyway, I've So, Mo Blacks. Clutch left hand. Throttle right hand. Front brake right hand. Gears left foot. Back brake right foot. So you've got all these controls. And uh, it's not like a car. Well, it is, but it's just all like different limbs for different controls. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so I learned how to do all that when I was before I even left school. And going up down a power station alley, 50cc bike, you know, that was more than enough at the time for me. And then we used to bomb around the jungle, which was the railway arches that led in and out of the Royal Small Arms Factory. And they used to link up with a main line, so there was a little branch line that went off there. And that and the arches were part of the, um, the support for the railway. Uh, so all the guns that for all our campaigns came through there, it's quite historic really. I think there's some information there now about all that, but we used it to ride motorbikes in and play war with air guns and things like that. So yeah, it was going up down in Brims down in <laughs> a lot of uh, a lot of stuff you could get into and um, two local lads lived in the houses adjacent to this field. And their names were Richard. No, his surname was Dawkins. Is it Dawkins? Yeah. And the other one was um, Ball or Bullock or something like that. And one of them, uh, Hawkins, Hawkins, not Dawkins. Richard Dawkins. What do you call it? Isn't it? Uh, a famous atheist. <laughs> I've got too much shit on it on YouTube. Anyway, so he. Um, Hawkins had an RM100 and the other one had a bullet, I'm sure that was his name, he or Paul, Adam Paul, he had a YZ100 and the YZ was the MR and the RM was a Suzuki and eventually Gary got, uh, bought that RM100 and I remember the first time I rode it, I've actually got some photo, photographs of that day, I was 17 then and uh, of the power band on a motocross is if you haven't ever experienced it it's uh, it really is something else it's brilliant and um it just accelerates so fast and hard and you you know you've got a big back sprocket to uh to go through your gears as quick as possible and accelerate it now bends and it's brilliant and I had a go at that down that alley, power station alley, and I come back and I was like, I could not believe how quick it was. And all the adrenaline's going, and Gary took a photo of me with my own camera, and I was like, oh. <laughs> uh, Yeah, so that was a, uh, and that was the day off before I started work, you know, it was my old elephant memory kicking in again. And I started work on the 18th of October in Tesco's Tottenham, 1982, so that was the 17th, that was a month after my 17th birthday. Yeah, that was a, uh, I remember that day so well. It was just brilliant. It was all, he was letting us have a go on this with a motocross or we'd never had it, had one before. Or was that Steve Mason? No, no, Gary had it first and then Steve Mason bought me off him. Then Gary bought a 125L liquid cool RM 125. Yeah, and I think he, did it have a disc brake on the front? I can't remember that. And that was a rapid rapido Ralph, as we used to say that was. But before all that happened, Gary had a friend called uh, <laughs> Gibbsy <laughs> who lived down Golds, Golds down close, Golds down road, Golds down road. Gibbs and uh, Gibbsy's house. If you knew the area, if you just walk down the side of the house and open the kitchen door, you know. Open up the cupboard and empty yourself to their wagon wheels. We used to do it all the time because you know where they kept all their grub. And uh, they were, you know, big family, loads of kids and all that. And uh, the oldest lad, he um, he had his bedroom in the front downstairs of the house. I can't remember his name now. But Gary uh, got his 
the uh, motorbike uh, fixed an MOT for him and he was really grateful. And that motorbike was a Kawasaki KH250 triple with uh, power pipes on it. I think, oh, did he have the standards? No, oh, I can't remember that. But anyway, it weren't running too well and Gary fixed it for him, but he had to wait for the parts and he had to wait <laughs> quite a long time for the parts to come in. And he had to test drive it and all that. <laughs> So uh, we used to just go out on this bike and uh, I was just, just used to get this old stadium uh, open face crash helmet that I used to use to go to, work, uh, go to school on on the back of my dad's step through because I just loved motorbikes that much. I was prepared to uh, take the embarrassment of, um, of uh, what do you call it? Uh, get, getting caught by um, my mates at school and they did catch me once and I was so embarrassed because I used to get off down by a surfing swimming pool and uh, and it just lit me in the we was always a little bit on the late side but that was never quite good at getting out of bar in the morning and um, so I used to we used to go up Carhatch Road, Carhatch Lane over the 810 down Ladysmith Road through the little uh, restrictions stop the motors getting through and left down Sketty Road, down to school. Well, I used to get my drop me there because my mates used to hang around when they caught me once. There's only once I was so embarrassed. It was awful. So I <laughs> fucking get off the back of that. But was, oh, no, my dad was laughing. Anyway. And uh, yeah, so I had this lid, and we went, me and Gary used to go out on the back of this, I used to get on the back of it. And we just, just tear ass around on this 250. Oh man, it was fantastic. Oh, I, oh man, what a laugh. We just couldn't start laughing. We used to pull wheelies, well he did, I was just hanging on with dear life. But it was hilarious, like, you know. And, uh, they proper hooligans, really, really badly, <laughs> really badly. Anyway, because he taught me how to ride this fizzy, he let, he, he let me have a few goes on this KH250 up down the power station, and he, and he goes, don't like the Pratt, worse than that thing. Keep your speed then, get used to it. Go on, just go for the gears, it's just a bike, you know. And he, he let me go up and down, and I, I love this thing. He was like, I've got a bit of an obsession with Kawasaki triples, and there's a keys around the corner of me. He's got a load of them in his garage, the H2s, the 750s, they were like brutal at the time. And they were for fortune. I'll have to uh, show him my full license. I'll, I do talk to him. <laughs> wonder if he'll let me. Well, you never know. Anyway, so back on the story. Um, yeah, I had a quick, you know, a few, good, good few goes of this thing, and I kind of got used to it, and I did let, let it up, open it up a bit, and uh, he goes, you know, be careful, don't go around the corners with your brakes on, and all that, and I used to listen to everything he told me, you know. and then one day we went past um, Stevie Mason's house, which was on the S bed, the car ranch road, all my mates were outside, and they see me, obviously green with envy, got around to my house, he goes, go around and show your mates, uh, yeah, you're, right, you're riding it, so I just fucking shot back round. <laughs> so, right, like that, passing hell like that. Good job. Uh, yeah, put a few notes out of joint there, but uh, yeah, it was good. And then, um, then we had, uh, he's come round, see, and I used, to, I used to love a Benson and he'd give me a fag and all that. But he, he I, he, He'd only give me a smoke unless I'd earned it. And he'd have to scare me enough to <laughs> get me nerves like absolutely like all the adrenaline like, you know, as we call it now. But back then it was your nerves, wasn't it, you know? And I was like, oh god, I need a fag, I need a fag. So and then he'd and he used to hold this man and all that, and you know, that's enough chocolate, like, da no, 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 that's enough. So like, wow no, only one lug, only one lug and all that. <laughs> One night, we're messing about down in the power station alley. He says, uh, come on, let's go back. So, he's come around all these beds round by the power station. And as you're going back the walls, what's the name of that? Road, Bill Marsh Lane. And you've got the road that runs off of it where, uh, yeah, 
Bristol. He's a still works there. Now he does. I've done a bit of work for him actually. Over here. Anyway, you come. He's going back towards Brimstone, remember, lot basically. So, and then that railway track that I was talking about earlier that came out of the jungle that carried all the guns. There was another one further down the alley, and that was for the coal for the Brimsdown power station to go in and out of. Now, as you came down the alley, the council had built up a, uh, basically a raised up the tarmac, so uh, cyclists could roll over the the track without, like, it, you know, the, like the big rail sticking up. So they leveled it out and rolled gently down the other side, gently up. <laughs> Gently being the operator for her, or not so gently. No, gently down the other side. Yeah, it, it, it's all planned, right? So he's, and I, because he said to me, hold on round me waist. And he never ever said that much. So I knew that was gonna be, I knew what was coming, because I knew what was, that was there. And I could hear him laughing. And I remember interlocking my fingers, because uh, I knew he weren't gonna back off. And it was like, you know, this was this thing just opened up like this was the fastest thing I'd ever been in, been on, and he he wrung he wrung his neck this bike, it is he it, it went through the gears screaming the tits off this thing, yeah, and it's went early towards this railway track with a ramp on it basically, and we hit that ramp at 70 miles an hour, and we took off, <laughs> and we flew through the air for what seemed like an eternity. And I was holding on, I still had my hands interlocked around his, uh, under his arms, and in front, like across his chest there. And I came out the seat, and I, my, uh, I was flying, basically, I was superman in behind him. And I was looking down at his head, <laughs> and I could hear him laughing, like this manic laugh. <laughs> and, uh, I just thought that's it, it's all over man, we're never going to get away with this. And I came down with the bike and we landed way down the alley, way way down the alley, 70 mile an hour to hit a ramp, it's quick, quick, quick. And we went quite a long way, I can't remember how far, but it was a long, long way. A lot, a lot more, a lot further than it was comfortable. And this wasn't a, like a problem, this wasn't a motocross, so this was a road bike with two people on it. So uh, the suspension probably was shy anyway, because they always were back then. And uh, we, I remember it when he, the tyres made contact, and he he was a brilliant rider, Gary, and he held onto his bike, <laughs> and it was snaking left to right, left to right. It's all corrugated iron down the left hand side, brickwork down the right hand side. So, you, you know, if you're going to collide with it, any of that, it's going to work. And I still had hold of him, man, away to my legs, or off the foot pegs now. And uh, <laughs> he's, he's, he's lurched the left and right a few times, and it went all like that. And the front, he's got his, and he's basically got it straight by pulling the throttle back again, basically. <laughs> And uh, it just took off again, and I was going, for fuck's sake! Oh, there'll be things come out here, you know, hang on. Getting a, bit, getting a bit carried away with me, um, animations. Yeah. But, yeah, there's an empty road in front of me, there's no one about, so don't worry about it. And, um, yeah, so, uh, we were, um, like, when you pull, when you hit a throttle, when something's like snaking around, it's like, like uh, when you see someone trying to jack, jack knife in a trailer, if you put your foot down it and pull it out, and while you put your brake on, it makes it worse. So he done the right thing, but then it obviously kept the, the throttle on all the way to the end and then hit the brakes right at the last minute. And uh, <laughs> I've got, we got off, <laughs> it was in hysterics. And I was like, I can't speechless. And uh, I've never had an adrenaline like it. I was probably the, the first extreme, really, really extreme thing I've never done. I was still at school. 
and uh, I couldn't stop laughing <laughs> as well. It was so funny. And uh, I can't believe it, we, you know, we got away with it. And we did nothing wrong with us, but I, I was half expecting it. We're all fucked up on the floor, all, you know, like coming out. Like, <laughs> but uh, I was standing on my feet laughing. And uh, he goes, I think you've. I think you deserve a fair chop. So he gave me a Benson because they were quite expensive. And uh, I was 70p for 20, but yeah, it's not well if that much earn, isn't it? But um, yeah, I don't have to have a fair laugh. What a laugh. It was, he, he was mad, and I've told that story so many times I probably um, uh, <laughs> not wore it out. But you know, I've got to record it for posterity because uh, people. Nah, they are allowed to do things like that, but everyone demonises them for it, really, because this country's like that. Um, what else are you going to do, eh? Sitting doors playing bloody Xboxes. Ain't the same, mate. Ain't the same. Get out here and do shit. It's brilliant. Anyway, so yeah, I went to school the next day and uh, I couldn't stop telling everyone. Like, uh, yeah, I think the teachers are a bit one of them. Lessons as well. And then I was saying, I was saying, ah, nothing, nothing, nothing. And I'm like, yeah, what are you about up to? Blah, blah, blah. So that was that story. The Power Station Alley on the KH250. Now, I've got another one, and I'm going to pause this. And so we can upload them in two separate chunks, bite sized chunks, and it's easier to find the stuff. Alright, so that was that.